Welcome back, Officers of the Republic. It's your Coruscant Underworld Police Chief, AP Gaines, here. And let's talk about massive disappointment. Um, Lord Vader was the most anticipated character in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes history. And probably the character who I would have, and probably all of you would have guessed, would have enticed the most people to wail on him. As you know, a large majority of these player base in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is free to play, does not spend money. There's a minority of people who spend lots of money. Those people pay to keep the lights on, and we don't pay and uh, try and reap the benefits of an all right game uh, without having to uh, to pay anything for it. And so what was it that enabled us to have such amazing hype for a character who we all really, really wanted? Let's be honest, Lord Vader, we used to call him Fallen Anakin for years, is is what we wanted so much, so much. This is the character we wanted. You're going to see some gameplay while I talk here, and it's going to kind of help illustrate my point. I'm going to talk about, right off the bat, not the worst thing in the world, but just something that uh, that I can't iterate enough, reiterate enough, is his moves are uninspired, it feels like. Um, you know, for all that is required to unlock him... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. His moves just seem a little bit bland. We'll wait for him to take a turn here. As you can see, Darth Vader is doing a culling blade. You know, he's doing some good stuff. Uh, you know, he's not critting, which is uh, sad, but, you know, Darth Vader, RIP. Uh, but once Lord Vader takes a turn, you know, he has three moves, and none of them really look Lord Vader-like. Um, let's see. He's got his Darth, uh, what is this, the hamburger? Yeah, he's got the Darth hamburger. That one is okay, but like his his AOE ability, which I think is the one that gives him dots, is just like red circle go up. Um, there's no, you know, when Kenobi does his call to assist, he's running around flipping. It's kind of similar to Anakin's special ability. It feels like Anakin's second ability is kind of just copy and pasted of Kenobi's. A basic is just going to be a basic, but what's up with this third ability? Like, look at Maul. When Maul takes a turn, you know... A shadow goes out and then lands and explodes, and he does a cool thing, and when he does it the last time, there's an extra effect, and then he does his AoE and it's all this cool stuff. Um, you know, when Cat does stuff, and I guess you just see the ultimate, it's just Kenobi's ultimate. He he goes like, woo. All right, let's, let's see the, the red cloud of smoke here. Come on. Press the red cloud of smoke. You can do it. You can do it. There you go. Like, oh, such great animations. Also, one more thing that a lot of you guys have been mentioning to me, and I want to include so that you guys, you know, feel like your voice is heard. The character model, he just looks like a robe. Um, I don't get to enjoy Fallen Anakin, Lord Vader. It's, I just look at a robe and a blue lightsaber. Um, I wish, you know, maybe the robe wasn't on. I get that that's from the iconic scene where he walks into the Jedi Temple and then goes to Mustafar, and then he turns, his eyes finally turn that Sith yellow. And that's a cool homage in, like, his ultimate ability. But, I mean, I would have liked to see, you know, what he looked like. You know, when you do the Kenobi event and you actually fight Lord Vader, I want that Anakin, that Lord Vader, because that actually looks cool. Now, the main reason people are upset about lord vader and not as excited as you know we would have liked his requirements are honky tonk badonka donk radonka donk steep they're really really steep um this is a character who i would have really really liked to have on my roster and I, I i finally have kenobi i'm not gonna have cat for a while but i'm actually in a position where i could progress towards lord vader eventually and I'm actually, you know, in a spot where with my income from Arena is about to go up, uh, I'm in a decent guild, so I'll be getting okay rewards. The Sith, ra the Sith Raid will be simmed, so I'll have some, a little bit extra gear. I'm in a spot where I can go for Lord Vader, but because of his requirements being super steep, I'm less inclined. I probably will just never get him. Uh, also because, you know, he kind of is not amazing without Maul. Maul makes him a very, very meta team. Don't worry, guys. If you guys have Lord Vader and you get Maul... Maul they're going to be broken. They can beat Kenobi. They'll dominate all other GLs. It'll basically just be Kenobi and Lord Vader at the top of the meta until, you know, Galactic Legends 69 comes out. But, um, you know, I can't even get Cat because I don't have 4 million GP because whoever's uh, bright idea that was uh, is screwing me over. 
and I'll never be able to get mall. Like, I'll have maybe 30 mall shards by the time mall is no longer in conquest, and then they'll have an opportunity to sell them to me, but I'll be using my crystals to relic other stuff because, you know, the grind never ends, and then he'll go to packs, and then I'll just never be able to afford him, and I'll just never have him. Um, and that's really disappointing uh, because this is a combo that, you know, as a Star Wars fan, I don't get lore-wise, but, you know, as a, as a fan of the game, I would love to have this combo on my squad. I would love to have Maul to use with Mandalorians because Maul is super broken with Mandos. I would love to have Lord Vader to use as, you know, my second Galactic Legend with Kenobi, uh, especially because they're meta-defining. I understand the requirements are going to be steep because they are so meta-defining. I mean, OG Galactic Legends requirements felt steep back in the day, and now, you know, they're not really that bad. I don't... I don't see any of the uh, the OG two Galactic Legends being Ray or Kylo's requirements as being you know the end of the world after grinding all the way through Kenobi's. But then again, I don't want Ray or Kylo. I don't even at this point want Sith Eternal after his massive nerf, or you know JML, who's never really been the best Galactic Legend without you know every single other good Jedi on his team at the exact same time. <laughs> when there's two obvious meta-defining galactic legends who are just so gate-kept by Cat and Maul that I feel like it's a really weird situation where Capital Games is putting players who, you know, like myself, who would consider spending money. Um, it's like It goes back to the Conquest thing. Like, if you want players to spend money, you have to make it easy for them to spend money. It has to be a seamless, like, reactionary thing. Like... Oh, I'm so close. Oh, I just popped 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks for whatever the crystal packs are. And, um, you know, I buy some gear and then I have a relic character that I want. Or I have more energy to get tickets for a, a Galactic Legend. Or or I can, re, I can uh, you know, refresh the Executor event. Uh, transactions, especially in mobile games, need to be like brain dead. Like, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. just like, give me your money. But like having to like wait to strategic points or you know spend thousands of dollars on characters i don't want or need just to get an extra five hundred thousand galactic power which in itself is hard because you can't buy shards i mean you can but it's ridiculously ineffective to buy shards so they've really put me in a situation where even if i would like to spend money that i don't have but let's say i did have it i can't or it would be wasted upon me because of these characters who kind of gatekeep the Galactic Legends from being, you know, end game viable. And no, I'm not in the end game, but there are some crazy effing whales in my shards for both, you know, Fleet Arena for Executor and, um, you know, Lord Vader in Squad Arena. Um, and I won't be able to compete because, you know, I don't have the money. And yes, that is exactly how games are intended to play on mobile games. You can't compete unless you spend the money. But they're preventing me from having the opportunity to spend the money to compete, which I find a little bit weird. Maybe it's like a loyalty thing to players who've been playing for a long time because they kind of have an established player base who will, you know, spend money. But I'm going to get out of here, guys. Um, I got a long, long day today. Uh, I'm trying to get 10,000 subscribers. We're already going to do the Slave Leia cosplay. If we get 10,000 subscribers by, um, by the end of September instead of the end of October, I'll eat those, what, million Schofield chips that make you cry during the Slave Leia cosplay on Halloween. That should be fun. Uh, stay tuned for an update on the IGL. We're going to do an announcement video with introductions from all the players. And then after that is going to be the week one uh, video. That we're going to come out. We're going to tell you, like, how everyone did, and we're going to get excited, and we're going to find your guys' ideas uh, for feats, and then you guys are going to be able to vote on players and teams that you like uh, to help them have a better chance of winning the first ever IGL season. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love you, and I'll see you later.